Hi everyone, welcome back to our story, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, and we're up to chapter two. Um, in chapter one, it was Lucy went through the wardrobe and she discovered that she was in um, a wood and she came across a fawn. Um, chapter two is called What Lucy Found There. Good evening, said Lucy, but the fawn was so busy picking up its parcels that at first it did not reply. When it had finished, it made her a little bow. Good evening, good evening, said the fawn. Excuse me, I don't want to be inquisitive, but should I be right in thinking that you are a daughter of Eve? My name's Lucy, she said, not quite understanding him. But you are, forgive me, you are what they call a girl, said the fawn. Of course I'm a girl, said Lucy. You are in fact human? Of course I'm human, said Lucy, still a little puzzled. To be sure, to be sure, said the fawn. How stupid of me, but I've never seen a son of Adam or a daughter of Eve before. I am I am delighted. That is to say, and then it stopped, as, as, as if it had been going to say something. It had not intended, but had remembered in time. Delighted, delighted, he went on. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tumnus. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr Tumnus, said Lucy. And may I ask, O oh Lucy, daughter of Eve, said Mr Tumnus, how he you've come into Narnia? Narnia? What's that, said Lucy? This is the land of Narnia, said the fawn, where we are now. All that lies between the lamppost and the great castle of Kier Paravel on the eastern sea. And you, you have come from the wild woods of the west. I, I got him through the wardrobe in the spare room, said Lucy. Ah, said Mr Tumnus in a rather melancholy, melancholy voice. If only I had worked harder at geography when I was a little born, I should no doubt know all about those strange countries. It's too late now. But they aren't countries at all, said Lucy, almost laughing. It's only just back there. At least, I'm not sure, it's summer there. Meanwhile, said Mr Tumnus, it is winter in Narnia, and has been for ever so long, and we shall both catch cold if we stand here talking in the snow. Daughter of Eve, from the far land of Spear Oom, where eternal summer reigns around the bright city of Wardrobe, how would it be if you came and had tea with me? Well, thank you very much, Mr Tumner, said Lucy, but I was wondering whether I ought to be getting back. It's only just round the corner, said the fawn, and there'll be a roaring fire and toast and sardines and cake. Well, it is very kind of you, said Lucy, but I shan't be able to stay for long. If you will take my arm, daughter of Eve, said Mr Tumnus, I shall be able to hold the umbrella over both of us. That's the way. Now, off we go. And so Lucy found herself walking through the wood, arm in arm with a strange creature, as if they had known one another all their lives. They had not gone far before they came to a place where the ground became rough, and there were rocks all about and little hills up and little hills down. At the bottom of one small valley, Mr Tumnus turned suddenly aside as if he were going to walk straight into an unusually large rock, but at the last moment Lucy found he was leading her into the entrance of a cave. And there's a picture of them walking along together. As soon as they were inside, she found herself blinking in the light of a wood fire. Then Mr Tumnus stooped and took a flaming piece of wood out of the fire with a neat little pair of tongs and lit a lamp. Now we shan't be long, he said, and immediately put a kettle on. Lucy thought she'd never been in a nicer place. It was a it was little, dry, clean cave of a reddish stone with a carpet on the floor and two little chairs. One for me and one for a friend, said Mr Tumnus, and a table, and a dresser, and a mantelpiece over the fire, and above that a picture of an old fawn with a grey beard. There's a picture, all right, of them in the, um, in the house there. In one corner there was a door which Lucy thought must lead to Mr Tumnus's bedroom and on one wall was a shelf full of books. Lucy looked at these while he was setting out the tea things. They had titles like The Life and Letters of Silenus or Nymphs and Their Ways of Men, Monks, Gamekeepers, A Study in Popular Legend or Is It Man or Myth? Now, daughter of Eve, said the fawn. 
and really, it was a wonderful tea. There was a nice brown egg, lightly boiled for each of them, and then sardines on toast, and then buttered toast, and then toast with honey, and then a sugar-topped cake. And when Lucy was tired of eating, the fawn began to talk. He had wonderful tales to tell of life in the forest. He told about the midnight dances, and how the nymphs who lived in the wells, and the dryads who lived in the trees came out to dance with the fawns about long hunting parties after the milk-white stag who would give you wishes if you caught him, about feasting and treasure-seeking with the wild red dwarves and deep mines and caverns far beneath the forest floor, and then about summer when the woods were green and old Salinas on his fat donkey would come to visit them, and sometimes Bacchus himself, and then the streams would run with wine instead of water, and the whole forest would give itself up to jollification for weeks on end. Not that it isn't always winter now, he added gloomily. Then to cheer himself up, he took out from its case on the dresser a strange little flute that looked as if it were made of straw, and began to play. And the tune he played made Lucy want to cry and laugh and dance and go to sleep all at the same time. It must have been hours later when she shook herself and said, Oh, Mr Tumnus, I'm so sorry to stop you, and I do love that tune, but really, I must go home. I only meant to stay for a few minutes. It's no good now, you know, said the fawn, laying down its flute and shaking its head at her very sorrowfully. No good, said Lucy, jumping up and feeling rather frightened. What do you mean? I've got to go home at once. The others will be wondering what has happened to me. But a moment later she asked, Mr Tumnus, whatever is the matter? For the fawn's brown eyes had filled with tears, and then the tears began trickling down its cheeks, and soon they were running off the end of its nose, and at last it covered its face with its howl hands and began to howl. Here's a picture of Mr Tumnus crying in his chair.